Vegas Rat Rods officially ended after this happened. Oh, coming in hot! Look out! And Justin and Dave's recklessness finally catches up with them. Dude, did you hit somebody? The Discovery Channel has been home to some of the most popular television series of all time. This is especially true when it comes to shows made for gearheads like us, with great shows such as Fast and Loud, Christy, get in. Misfit Garage, Diesel Brothers, and Street Outlaws. You almost don't even need to turn the channel. One show on the Discovery Channel stood out above the rest in terms of creativity and uniqueness. However, seemed to end before it could really take flight. That's right, we're talking about Vegas Rat Rods. Welcome back to Tuna No Crust, and today we will be taking a closer look at the hit show Vegas Rat Rods and why it was taken off the air. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to our channel, and while you're at it, hit the notification bell. We are coming out with new videos on a regular basis and want to continue having you here. Check it out. This is Welder Up. I'm Steve Darnell. Come see my shop. You're going to love this. We feel badass rat rods. <laughs> yeah! History Vegas Rat Rods was a Discovery Channel series that followed Steve Darnell and his crew at Welder Up, a customization car shop located in Las Vegas, Nevada. Here, the crew would regularly push the boundaries of human imagination by building some of the most unique and beautiful vehicles you will ever see. The term rat rods refers to hot rods that you would find in the 1940s, 50s, and early 60s. But what makes the builds truly unique is the fact that the crew is not looking to actually restore or recreate these amazing vehicles. Rather, they take basic designs and piece together what would be considered Frankenstein vehicles using parts and materials from a number of other sources. The end results were always stunning, easily classified as works of art. Along with making gorgeous hot rods, the show is known for focusing almost exclusively on the raw talent and skill of each of the cast members. This is a far cry from other shows such as American Chopper, which would regularly highlight tensions and drama between the cast members. Sure, there are disagreements and arguments from time to time, but this is not the main focus of the show. It is all about the heart and passion of the crew. So, after four successful seasons on the Discovery Channel, why did it get taken off the air? After all, it was a pretty successful show, not prone to scandal or controversy. The answer isn't exactly one dramatic story that is filled with twists and turns. Rather, there were a few smaller factors that needed to be addressed. You no know, days are going by and nothing's getting done. But the longer we wait to put that cab on, the further and further back we're in. It's like I have to build a fire under these guys once in a while to get them going again. Grab that cab, let's put it on this truck, and let's get going. What do you want there? I'll put whatever you want. I want you to use a grinding disc like I asked you to and not be an about it. You got it? Yep. I pay for the not you. The show was very demanding on many members of the crew. It is one thing trying to run a successful body shop. It's an entirely different sort of beast when you bring in a camera crew and production team that are responsible for making your daily job into a reality show. Before the Discovery Channel came along, Welder Up was already a successful business and had been in operation for a number of years. When they made the call to allow the Discovery Channel to come in and document their day-to-day -day operations, many of them weren't exactly ready for what that entailed. Many times, the crew was required to be there for 12 hours per day for a number of days in a row in order to complete these complex projects within a certain period of time. After all, the Discovery Channel crew operates with completely different goals in mind. Their focus wasn't the cars, it was filming enough episodes within a certain period of time so that they could put together a full season. This proved to be especially difficult for one of the shop's crew members, Grant Schwartz. When he came along as a fresh face in Season 2, he found it to be much more difficult than he originally thought. First, he had to leave his home for several months straight back in Canada, leaving his wife and children behind. Second, when he arrived at the shop, it was cluttered and disorganized, at least by his standards. He acknowledged that it was more a matter of style, but it just didn't jive with the way he was used to things being done. 
Finally, the long hours and number of consecutive workdays wore on patients, making it difficult to get along with shop owner Steve. While Grant's situation eventually got better, it is an example of conditions that did not change through the course of the show. What is there, a rodeo in town? Howdy, it's the cowboy from the Idaho barn. Is this Mr. Steve Darnell? You're the happiest little guy. Yeah, I, I, try. I try, I try, I try. But I see a smile on your face, so it's working. Yeah. I think horsepower is fun and happy. I think rip roaring, snorting horsepower, burning out in the middle of the road, that dang near, near, that's get her done fun. Discovery Channel required Canadian cast members. Vegas Rat Rods ended up being very popular in the United States, even into its later seasons. It attracted the eyes of many celebrities and big name people who wanted vehicles built for them. But it didn't start off as an American show. It is, in actuality, a Canadian show. It had already gained a very good following before production moved to Las Vegas, Nevada. Discovery Channel wanting to keep in tune with its Canadian audience required the show to keep a certain quantity of Canadian content. Otherwise, they would not receive funding for the show. So, in order to resolve this little conundrum, the show always kept at least one Canadian crew member on board. This was incredibly difficult at first. As far as the production of the show is concerned, it not only kept the Canadian feel in the show, but it also helped add some fresh faces to the mix. But on set, it was a bit of a different story. Production crew or not, Steve Darnell had a shop to run. Throughout the seasons of the show, he was being required to adjust to different crew members. The requirement of certain workers would be daunting for any business owner. It seemed to be a constant challenge adjusting to other people's work styles, attitudes, and levels of performance. Although it did add the fresh looks and the Canadian flair for the show as the higher-ups wanted, it was a bit taxing on the actual operations of the business. My background is actually, I'm a journeyman auto body refinisher, so I fix cars and paint them, but I've always loved Rat Rod. So it was really cool to kind of switch worlds, and then now that I'm here, it's like, like what just happened? <laughs> The exit of Cheyenne Ruther left a big hole to fill. One of the most popular crew members to ever appear on the show came in season three, Cheyenne Ruther. The daughter of a body shop owner, she grew up around cars, eventually falling in love with him. Her passion for repairing vehicles was crazy, as she would regularly race, go off-roading, and demolish vehicles, only to help her father repair them in the shop later. When she was in 10th grade, she joined an apprenticeship at the Northern Alberta Institute of Technology to start perfecting her craft. Eventually, Ruther received her Red Seal Journeyman Certificate from NAIT. From there, she took off working on some amazing projects and restoring some serious cars. So when she came into the scene during the show's third season as part of Discovery's Canadian crew member requirement, she was excited to show off her skills while contributing to the creation of the automotive masterpieces. She had an amazing experience and was able to work on some fun projects. However, she was the only woman in a shop full of men. It was already hard enough being in an entire industry that was dominated by men. On top of that, she was the one crew member who was Canadian, causing her and even some of the other crew members to question if she was really there because of her skills or because of some requirement. After the season ended, Ruther returned home where she decided to remain with her daughter and pursue other opportunities. Upon her return, she said that she respected the shop, the crew, and the channel, thanking them for giving her the opportunity to appear on the show. However, she also felt as if it didn't really exemplify her true talent. Twelve episodes were enough for her. Since the show, she has worked for a few other automotive shops and even worked on some vehicles that made it into the SEMA Auto Show. She currently works as the lead auto body tech and body shop manager at Nefarious Customs. She also keeps a very active Instagram page where she showcases her projects. When the fourth season aired, it was clear that Ruther would not be returning. Although the season saw a bit of success, the ratings were not what they once were. The show left the air after that season. Today, Steve Darnell still runs Welder Up Garage and still performs the breathtaking work that he always did. There were some plans in place for a fifth season to be made, but planning was put on hold in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But there is little doubt that the show could be resurrected to a good amount of success. Thank you so much for joining us. For more amazing content, be sure to check out some of our previous videos. 
Also, don't forget to give this video a like while you're at it. We want to know that you're enjoying what we bring to you. Also, check out our merch store for some crusty, musty merch. We'll see you next time.